Hi all, let's have a look at a Division 3 game. So Division 3 of TCEC, which has just kicked off. So this is from round two. There's a really interesting game in round two, Leela against Bobcat. So uh, the opening goes Knight F3. This is the set start position for both of them. Four ply start position here. So this is the end of the book. Leela chose C4 here, so English opening territory bishop g2 d5 and now b3 now this position one of the objectives of the english opening is to try and create a majority of central pawns if black ever takes that it's like releasing the grip on the e4 square so there's some positional considerations here will bobcat appreciate these i hear bishop g7 was played bishop b2 queen b6 Queen c2, and now there is the move d takes c4. This might not be the most solid continuation overall in the position because it does release black's grip on the e4 square. So white potentially can play for e4 later now much more easily. Bishop f5 is played, a forcing move, but d3 is no big deal for white here. That's played. Black castled, white castled, queen c7. Now, a very interesting decision here c5 is this pawn a strength or a liability on c5 so very interesting decision there bishop g4 knight bd2 knight bd7 putting pressure on c5 a4 h6 and now another pawn put where it's under pressure from the queen so what is going on here we have the move e5 being played and this central pawn is immediately challenged by leader with d4 very interesting decision d4 we see e takes d4 knight takes d4 which holds the pawn on e2 there's no problem with this tactically it seems and now an awkward looking retreat knight b8 from bobcat h3 kicking the bishop back and this one goes all the way back to c8 and now e4 it looks like a very fine Good looking position is being uh, developed here from white. Knight fd7. This one goes to b3, protecting both a5 and c5. And positionally, it looks as though f4, e5 would not only lock in that bishop on g7, but secure the d6 square, for example. Maybe a knight can go to d6 later. Already, that plan is evident here. Rook d8, f4. So yeah, this idea of e5 looks very, very nice positionally to try and install um, an octopus knight on d6. One of my favorite Karpov Kasparov games, Kasparov had an octopus knight on d3 and it was very, very difficult for Karpov to do anything after. So will an octopus knight be installed here? Knight goes to a6 here, rook ad1, rook e8, e5. So the d6 square is locked down. Knight f8. Uh, this is does seem as though e6 is a lurking threat here. For example, if rook b8 just ignoring e6, the problem is it damages black's king side as well. So e6, this looks very nice uh, for white, this kind of scenario where bishop takes f6 is threatened. And that's just miserable looking with the pawn on e6 and a nice square on e5 in front of it. This looks like a very miserable position for black. So it seems knight f8 here is necessary against e6. And it introduces potentially knight e6 and bishop f5 in some lines. And leader plays g4, which cuts out both of these possibilities to some extent in the variations. So g4, an interesting uh, move before the active operations which may be possible uh, so if for example the knight went to d2 immediately at the cost of a pawn here uh, there is knight e6 for example and say knight c4 this position however the position is so strong that even this kind of scenario is actually good for white believe it or not this this kind of scenario is actually really strong for example like this hitting the queen there are there are a lot of disaster scenarios already in the position here showing white's position is pretty strong and it might 
this might be the most accurate move but it's also you know knight d2 as well is strong so we see uh bishop d7 and now yeah the d6 square Leela does play a move to get into that d6 square knight d2 even though it's at the cost of the a pawn so the octopus knight uh can be a reality here is it that powerful in this particular position? So black does take that pawn. Knight e4 protecting c5 on route to d6. Now, so knight d6 is taking on c5. So actually this knight steps back to kick the queen away from hitting c5. Uh, so the queen goes back. And we have actually knight d6, octopus knight. <laughs> it's it's a really impressive looking position but does it have concrete teeth because sometimes we can build up beautiful looking positions so what happens here well black felt a lot of dangers already in this position and seemingly cracks up by moving a pawn around the king g5 <laughs> it, it it looks as though basically for example f5 is a major threat even if black ever takes on e5 fg and and the f file it just looks as though black is in big trouble here because of f5 as an example so g5 looks like a, a very weakening move in many respects f5 is played here anyway sacrificing the e pawn so what's going on here bishop takes bishop takes rook takes so it's two pawns that black's got now from white's uh, opt seemingly optimistic operations but uh, queen c3 now and this spells big dangers for black the octopus knight is kind of disconnecting black's position a bit here and black offered the exchange up with rook a e8 so why well if rook e7 then there's queen f6 hitting the rook and h6 so for example this protecting the rook h6 could drop but first this is even better uh, hitting the bishop and the bishop's kind of stranded if bishop d7 then rook e7 hitting f7 it's just very nasty so this kind of scenario is just hopeless for black uh, for example here bishop d7 f6 threatening mate you can see that black is fairly defenseless so uh yeah, so queen c3, we have this offering of the exchange, not to allow this, it seems, queen f6. So that exchange is taken, so some material equality restored. Now rook f e1, just wanting the rooks off. Uh, so that's taken, White's, so white the exchange up, simplifies. Okay, now at the moment, black has two pawns, but bishop f1 is played. And now bishop f7, which seems odd to allow the double pawns. But what is going on here? If knight b4 as an alternative, this kind of move, rook d8, is annoying. Because then knight a5, and the pawn chain is being tortured. Say b6, taking, taking. This scenario, knight c4, b5, knight takes e5. Because this was a double attack. On e5 and b6 it just gets very very dangerous here yeah so if white gets a pawn back then it's clear sailing from there clear advantage so bishop f1 bishop f7 white takes that black takes here uh, if b takes then knight a5 this position there's rook d6 and then crashing through with a big advantage so black took here rook b1 and we have the scenario which now the pawns are pretty wrecked uh black's extra pawns don't really mean too much the rook is able to kind of get to them in fact sorry the game actually ended here after knight b6 plus 6.5 i believe for both sides uh for eight ply and here yeah game kind of adjudicated in white's favor based on that so the game could have continued rook takes h6 rook e6 rook e7 just picking up these pawns basically and here is the king could come into the center etc or king f8 
to try and not give some squares but the king comes into the center and then at some point this so the king just needed to stop any knight moves that technically and it's going to be very easy to win after that so let's go back to the final position of the game uh, so round about here the game ended in here so an interesting positional encounter from Bob Bobcat. What can we say in summary? Well, Bobcat seemed to allow White's central pawn mobility, starting with d takes c4. So I had central pawn mobility and used it to lock down the d6 square for an octopus knight, sacrificing a pawn in the process. But it seems once that knight was installed, White's attack was so dangerous, Black ended up playing g5, it seems, in panic mode. Then White won back the exchange with interest, basically. Uh, the, the pawns weren't enough, uh, the exchange down. Uh, because they became damaged anyway. So a very, very interesting positional uh, win there from Leela. So this is Leela 10, 5, 10, 520. So a very advanced Leela compared to the previous uh, division. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's see what happens as the tournament progresses. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.